all good, man. I don't do these very often, though. I mean, actually, I have in the past, obviously, but I, I don't, I, I don't anymore. But uh, looking forward to doing this one. I've been a huge fan of Chun forever. I trained with them a little bit in O2 when I was out in LA, when I lived out there. Uh, the New Japan Dojo was in Santa Monica. And Daniel Bryan lived up in the upper level. I I'm trying to remember who else lived up there with him, maybe Rocky Romero. And he was, it was a great dojo. Always guys like Boss Rutten would be coming by. The, Brazil, the Jiu Jitsu coach, uh, Waleed Ismail, they call him the Gracie Killer. I ran into, I ran into Shutsuke there. And he was still fighting them, you know? Gee, I wonder who's knocking on the fucking door and breaking the set. I can't imagine. You wanna let him in? Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, shit. Hey. What's going on? Cut, cut, cut. <laughs> He was fighting, you know, he was doing pride fights and all that, and like, mostly winning. Like, Crocot beat him. I'm pretty, like, I remember Crocot beat him, but who the, who the fuck didn't Crocot beat back then? So, I mean, he's got that, he has that legit, you know, I'm a bad motherfucker, like, and everybody knows it, and I can act like Liberace and Michael Jackson and, and fucking, you know, really flamboyant people like that, and what are you gonna do, kick my ass? You know, that's just kind of, that's the shit I like about him. He brings that legitimate It's just fucking him. such a unique persona. It's like, because it's not a character. It's not like, we want you to be this character. It's like, now people are going to be saying like, we want you to be like Shinsuke Nakamura. You know what I mean? Like, because he's the original. And then people are going to try to copy it. And that's where it's going to get all fucked up. Because you can't copy that. That's sick. Innovator in a true Fuck yeah. People want to knock him for trying? Like, he, you know, he wasn't happy. And I, you know, I mean, I know there's two sides of the story. I mean, I'm like, I'm sure he was a pain in the ass to deal with, but once he got that, once he got the leverage to be that pain in the ass, I mean, some people like to, some people like to use it. <laughs> but come on, I mean, the guy, he's trying. He, they wouldn't assign him like to it if, if they didn't think it was worth it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess him and Dana White are friends or whatever, but that wouldn't be enough for me to fucking, like, I have a ton of friends like that, or, I know some of them are gonna get offended now. Some like that were really the shits that were expecting me to like try to, you know, put a word in for them. And I'm like, I can't, like you can be my best friend and I can't fucking put my stamp on you if you're no good, if you're not any good. Right. So I don't know, I mean, he must have saw something. I just think all the wear and tear of the re pro wrestling, like, I don't know, man. I hope he does have a fight. Cause that's what he wants to do, even if he gets his ass kicked. Do you see a return to the WWE? Yeah, yeah, and you know what? He like, and I know he said no, no fuck that, I'm not doing it. Blah blah. blah. I ever, just, you know how many people have said that? Just like on, only everybody. Mm -hmm. And you know how many people have not returned? Only like almost nobody. <laughs> Scared the living shit out of me, and I don't. Scare, I, I mean, I was like, seriously, like, kind of in tears. Not kind of, I was, because I was like really concerned. Especially, I mean, it's that's. If you've never been up like that high, I mean, people go, "Oh, it's only 25 feet or whatever." Well, then you stand on the edge of that fucking thing and look down, and then jump off, even onto a crash pad. Even, even you know, under like a really safe, something safe, you know, or into, into the water, like is even, for somebody like me, I'm scared to death of heights. 
You wouldn't take that off then. Hell no. No way. I remember one time when Shane and I had a, mat, a, a WrestleMania match, and he was in the in, in the middle of the ring cutting a promo on me, and like for some reason there was a cage. I think we had like some kind of a cage thing that was before Mania, and so as he's talking, the cage is lowering down from the ceiling, and the great idea was that yeah, I'll go up the catwalk on the top of the arena and then fucking climb down with no safety gear or anything, climb down onto the chain, onto the things that lower the cage down and like be on top of the cage. And you know, when, when it comes lowering down, the people will see me, you know? And then I jump down and I beat the shit out of them. And it was great, but it was probably like the scariest thing I've ever done in wrestling. <laughs> I'm just like, my, my hands were like, like, hold on, I was so scared. Even me, as, as afraid of heights as I am, like, once you can, once you commit it, man, that's, it, there's, you know what's even scarier to me, to me than the heights and, you know, worried about getting hurt is the fucking, the reaction I'd get when I fucking climb back down that cage like a pussy because I didn't want to jump. <laughs> I thought it was really sweet the way he milked it. Yeah. When he, you know, because he has a, you know, everybody knew he's going to do something spectacular, so it's got to be off the cage, you know, because he's not near the entrance ramp like he's done before and all that. Mm -hmm. But, and the stadium was so huge, because I'm sitting with Pac and Kevin in this, we have our own little Wolfpack skybox, and we're watching it. And the people are so far removed, but then there's those giant screens. So I'm watching the screens, and a lot of people, are, the people down close watch that, but a lot of people are watching the screen to see. And the, and the WWE is so slick, man, they go to facials. They go to take, then they go to shave. Takes facial, yeah, they were they were great, too. And, Shane, and these guys know yeah. how to work. So then Shane is there, and he looked up. And the place erupted. And then, and then, you know, then he kind of, then he milked again, he stood up, he wandered around a little bit, and then he looked up again. Like, there was a time when people would have stood up and went, pointed and said, you want me to go to the top, brother? Yeah. You know, and that would have worked in that era. Doing it more cerebrally is, was I mean, you're still doing that, you're just doing it on a more, like, subconscious or, like, subtle, like... Milking, milking it, Yeah. Kid. Milking, kid. Milking it without him knowing you're milking it. Reigns and Triple H, what do you think about Roman Reigns as champion? And I mean, do you think the crowd turned in his favor by the end of the match? Yeah, they did. And then they fucking forgot that they were supposed to be uh, mad and hate Roman. Yeah. And, and I want to go on record with this yeah. one too. Please. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I said this. Right there too. I said this bef as the match started and when the people were shitting on him. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I sent out a tweet. I'm like, I might be wrong about this, but I'm just going to say right now that by the end of this match the people are going to be with with him and they're going to fucking pop for him and oh my god i got so much shit from people hate like like hate just ridiculous fucking like uh replies and it's it, and we didn't know we didn't know what they were doing in the match but it's i just knew paul is that fucking good uh, he could turn he could i've seen him do it with cena in chicago the, my feeling is is that there's a it's always been a fan base that like to hate the anointed one. I Razor, I did an angle with this guy, and to turn me babyface when I was Razor, and it was like a slow building angle, and then I was kind of like the people's guy. And at the same time, Lex Luger's touring the country in the Lex Express. He's he's the anointed chosen one. It doesn't work people weren't with him, it, it didn't work. And so, this Alex, did you hear the pop when, now people hate Cena, right? Did you hear the pop when he came out? They went, Boom. whoa! Oh, oh, wait, yeah, wait yeah. a minute, wait a minute, boo! Yeah. I'm so happy he's fucking here! Oh wait, wait, boo! You know, I, you know, <laughs> the same thing when, when Roman, did the bang, you know, did the finish, when he hit the Superman punch, boom, people go, yeah, oh, wait, wait, boo. 
They popped. They popped. When he speared them, they popped. And then, boo. You know. That's, I don't know. That's, I mean, that's really. In the sentence. We'll yeah. see what happens tonight in Raw. I predict, I predict he'll be at Raw. We'll be there. It's your personality that gets you over. It's, when they point the camera at you, just play your ability or lack of ability. But do it in three, two, you know, go. You know, do your thing. Every, I'm so happy now that they have that the women are more involved. I'm glad they changed the name. Thank God they got you know, the real sakes, Diva's name you know, off of that Diva shit. Diva has a negative connotation to it almost. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for God, you know, this company is doing everything they can. All the people, who, the problem is all the people who are booing and stuff, they've already got the network. That's why when we do a big show like this, and no, then they'll capture a screenshot of them canceling the network and then they'll reorder it again afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. Get the network. Tell your friends. You know, it's a much better deal than paying 70 bucks or something. There was no division. There was one champion and they brought in different girls. They had brought in different ladies to, they brought in like, I think, you know, Medu Alundra Blaze Medusa was the champ, and they would bring in uh, Bull Nakano or Bertha Faye Ronda Singh, who was actually much, way, way better than what they how they used her. She was an, actually a phenomenal uh, pro wrestler. She was great. But, uh, so it wasn't really a division back then. You really couldn't, can't, you could, there was only two women at one time. You know, it was almost like, I don't mean for this to sound wrong. Well, it's gonna fucking sound how it sounds. And it's almost like booking mid, like a midget match, you know. Which thank God that's not the case anymore. You know, it's like in the UFC. They swore, oh no, we're never gonna have women fighting in the octagon. Psh, you had to eat those words. I thought he looked like he had never been out of the ring. I thought he looked incredible. Yeah, he looked better than... He commented on the fact that when he traveled with me and Kevin initially, that we were both like muscle guys and working out and training and eating and all that. And he never was. He was just a great athlete. And so he started, we, he had to go to the gym because we went to the gym. And uh, he said, but I never really seriously dieted and worked out or anything before. But he did it and he looked great last night. Yeah. He said, you know, his whole career he never had abs and now he's retired he has abs. Yeah. yeah. You see one more, you see a return for him possible. He can do whatever he wants. I don't think he wants he it. He doesn't. There's nothing, what's left for him to accomplish? He's pretty, he's, he's pretty big into keeping his word too, as far as like the retirement thing, because so many people, I know some people that retire every couple of years. And, you know, then they have another retirement tour and then another one, whatever. But he just doesn't, I just, I really get the impression he doesn't, he, he does what he, he said, I'm retiring. Sean is so a strong family man. It's yeah. Now. He's enjoying all the other things in life. I remember hooking up with Sean in Kansas City. We were the, the clique was born then. We hung out together. And, you know, he we felt the same way. It's not who I am, it's what I do. You know, he was he used wrestling to get the happiness in life and be successful. And, you know, he didn't do it wrong. He loves it. You saw him last night. Yeah. When I saw him when I came back, I said, how's it feel? 100,000 people cheered. He, ah, oh, it feels great. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he was on his way and like his, his family's waiting for him and everything. And like, he was just going to say goodbye real quick. And like, by the time, I, next thing you know, it's half an hour later and it's still like, he's still psyched and we're still putting each other over, well, putting him over. <laughs> we, all, we all vicariously get a buzz off it. You yeah. know, it's like, we've been there, yeah. I've been there, done it with you. Mm -hmm. Wow, you look great, buddy. Good way to go. Yeah. But you know, then he was in, he's on the, in the car and on a three hour drive back home with his family. Right, and he, already, and he told me that, and see, his wife did the diet plan and stuff with him. So she looks incredible as well, and mm -hmm. she, she knows more about training and diet than Sean does, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, Sean's just genetically gifted, and, yeah. So he told me they've already planned out, they're stopping at Whataburger in this town, and they're going over here, like he's finally gonna eat some carbs, you know, he's been dieting really strict, you know. He had a goal to be look great at WrestleMania, and he accomplished it. Yeah, he did it. With, with, 
with, with, with not much notice either. <laughs> One more notch on his wrist to WrestleMania reputation. I ran in, when I first got into the hotel, I checked in, I was going into the gym in the morning, he was coming out, and that's the first time I saw him, he looked great. I looked at him and went, he goes, Vince gave you six weeks notice. I said, plus you want to do it, right? He went, oh yeah, yeah. I did, the first thing I thought was like, Either he's in really good fucking shape or he fell off the wagon with a crack bench because holy fuck is he lean. <laughs> mm -hmm. I dig those guys a lot. People go, oh, they're stealing your shit. No, they're not. Like, they were, yeah, it's a tribute. It was like, I mean, I, I, mean, I can speak, I know Scott and I both them publicly said, yeah, no, no, we dig it. I, me and Pop, I went out of my way to meet the Young Bucks the other day at WrestleCon. Oh, that was the first time you met them? First time, yeah. Oh. Because they've been so cool to my son that I wanted to meet these guys and thank them in person, you know? Yeah, they're great. They got this reputation. Oh, oh yeah, so at, first, at first, Cody said, man, these Young Bucks are dicks, Dad. So I said to Pac, I said, man, like, they, and Pac would know, they're just like us. They're just good. They get paid, they're obnoxiously happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and they're running the show. Yeah, and and also they apparently they didn't shake the right hands when they got to their tryout or whatever, you know, for WWE and their uh, this reputation spread that maybe they had an attitude or whatever. So they just fucking went with it. <laughs> they just went with it and like time is time. And I think it's funny. Because I know those kids since they were 17, even and the other one was younger. I've I did six mans with them, and I mean those are about as like good a guys as you'll find, like quality people. They're both fathers. They're both fathers. And you know what I love about it? And I told AJ this the other night at Hall of Fame when I was talking to him, because Cody was around him. He took Finn's spot as head of the Bullet Club. Yeah. And AJ's family guy, strong Christian, doesn't drink, doesn't do drugs. Those young bucks, young guys, family guys. I don't drink. think I've ever seen the don't, bucks have a beer. They don't drink, they don't mm -hmm. do drugs. I'm so happy my son is getting exposed to that because when I came up, it was a whole different scene. The top guys were drinking and doing drugs, and if you wanted to be hanging around them, you did or you weren't invited to hang around. I'm so happy that it's changed. And now it impacts my family personally. You know, I think it's great. Yeah, it's, and I, some people say, you know, well, I've been one to say this, but like, kind of taken away a little bit of the outlaw spirit that is attractive, that attracts people to pro wrestlers, but I'd rather my friends and my loved ones be alive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Fuck off. <laughs> I'd rather them be alive. <laughs> it wasn't what I felt locking up or touching them, it was just the buzz you feel when you know, it's because they were my partners. I actually did have a match or two with them. One, I teamed with Marty Gennetti and one of them. Um, there was some good stuff in the match, but it drug on a little bit in, in certain areas. It had nothing to do with the Bucks. They were great. Their schedule, the, the amount of merchandise they sell, um, there's a lot of indicators that say they're the top team. And I mean, look, I understand Jim Cornette's point of view. I understand where he's coming from. But things, are, things change. And there's different niches. You know, there's Chikara, there's this, there's, you know, I mean, and you know, guys getting upset about Joey Ryan's you porn plex, you know. Come on, get over it. It's all. Come on, everybody, lighten the fuck up. You know, I was the biggest, as big a wrestling purist as as Eric could have been, and like I realized that. I mean, hey, it's, it's fucking showbiz, and unless you're gonna go out there and do and beat the living fuck out of each other, like Shunsuke and. Uh, and Sammy did, like, which is not something you can do every day. Then, I mean, you know, and people know, like a wrestling high spot, it just, 
they know from MMA that no, it doesn't work that way. You never see me do high spots anymore. I think the high spots suck, to be honest with you. Like, tackle, drop, down, leap, front. Fuck, come on, man. You still falling for that? <laughs> As soon as you drop down, I'm going to fucking stomp you right in your fucking head. <laughs> Doesn't need to be almost like an overhaul of like that, that kind of psychology? Yes. Yes. And no grabbing, no grabbing rear chin locks. If you're if you grabbing a rear chin lock, why don't you just put them in a rear naked choke and finish the fucking thing? I mean, it just takes people changing. You know, hey, look, no more doing this, no more doing that. You know, and it's just like that one point in Hunter and Roman's match, like Hunter got an arm bar on him and Roman let him fucking extend the arm all the way. You can't do that. Yeah, immediately. I mean, that's the first thing you learn is, is so, you know, once you extend the arm, you're, you're fucked. Certain indies don't help themselves when you do take a chance on going to see them and you get there and there's fucking uh, this ring that looks like it came from somebody's garage from 1952 and you know you got a bunch of guys that are basically gl glorified cosplayers that don't look the part other than the fucking costumes they're wearing uh, going out there and and stinking the place up. That's what fucks indies. I go and I go to, cause like I've weeded all those out now, no pun intended, but um, the ones I work for, they have strong fan bases. Uh, they put money back into the show. They don't just fucking suck hole off of it, off of the wrestling. They actually put back into it nice rings. Uh, they have a set, like, you know, of their little entrance ways and a projector and monitor, or not monitor, but big a screen. So, you know, they do, you, there's certain things you can do that aren't gonna, you know, break the bank, but people will go, will feel better about spending their money on coming to see it. There's got, there's kinds that are like the ROHs and the, I don't know, I wouldn't even call ROH an indie company. That's not, just because, because truthfully, the whole indie thing came about, like, it used to not even be called indies. They were called outlaw shows. Because if you weren't part of the NWA, even WWF was part of the NWA. Um, but to me, everything is indie now. There is no more, there really is no more indie obviously and in in that's grand to scale there's no governing body even in boxing WBC IBF it doesn't mean shit it's fucking obsolete so everything's indie now it's just how much of a budget indie does this particular indie have and how, how smart are the people running it uh, there's like I was saying the uh, evolves and these that they, they run storyline and that's fine too because they do have their fan base that follows it but uh, then you have like a big time wrestling who they're they don't they just have they go and they tour and they understand that most people coming you know because it's all they, they put a lot of big names on the show and they might run a little storyline throughout the night uh, I'm guessing they probably do, but nothing major. It's just they understand that the people just want to come out and see good guy versus bad guy and somebody like that, you know, like just using me for instance, you know, that they remember when they were, you know, when they were younger, they have fond memories of, and they want to see me do f two spin kicks, a Bronco Buster and a X Factor, and, tell everybody that I've got two words for them. Those, there's those two different types of, of indie companies. And they're, I'm cool, I like both of them. I prefer to do the big time wrestling one where, 
you don't have to be involved in a storyline. You know, I like to just come in and have a tag match with maybe their top babyface or a guy they're trying to push babyface wise and try to give them a rub. It was a great opportunity when I was in like a, a lower part of my career. All they had to do was give me, you know, the opportunity and put me on live TV. And it was just, it was taking candy from a baby. It was just so fucking easy with that. And it was, I mean, I'm not saying we didn't work, work really hard because we did, but it was my first taste of Wow, that big, like, that mainstream, every fucking buddy knows who you are. Yeah, so it was my, that was my first, like, wow, you know. I mean, obviously the first one was one, two, three, kid shit, but doesn't even compare. Like, on that, like, grand, you know, where people that don't watch wrestling know who you are. And then, honestly, DX, And I'm not downplaying the NWO thing at all, but it was even like, it was even bigger. It was cool. I was out with the, with the injury I was, and I had been training. I was in excellent shape. And then I found out Kevin and Scott were coming back and there were some people in creative that, and I'm not naming any names, but that we're trying to say that trying to not put me in the in the group, you know, and uh, just really basically, you know, between Kevin and Scott and actually Hulk doing me the solid, like like he insisted like I be the one that come out and whack him with the chair, you know, he's laying in a pool of blood. I was pretty solid thing. Like I I never forget that him doing that and and hey we did monster business people can say what they want about how it was handled but as far as like house show attendance and um making the people like make shitloads of noise uh it worked great and that i mean obviously it wasn't ideal the things that happened you know kevin getting hurt and then scott leaving and so, I mean, but I liked it while it lasted. It, I mean, it, we should have been booked stronger. I mean, because really, if you think about it, and we don't mind doing this at all, like shining the baby bases. And I guess, you know what, really, I, I was gonna say they didn't really let us get a lot of heat, but that's not true from the WWE stand, like, See, like, Kevin Sullivan type of heel heat is way different than WWE's idea of it. So, we were just killing everybody in WCW. And people thought it wasn't as good, but really, if you think about it, we left Hogan laying, we left Rock laying at different times, you know? I mean, that was that was heat for, for WWE's way of doing things at the time. So, I mean... I think they thought they did a good job with it. I think. <laughs> How could it have been booked? It, it, shit happened that, you know, affected the direction of, you know, what they wanted to do with it. I say a lot of people look at that whole time as, like, from a fan's perspective, as Vince bringing the NWO, it's like kind of make, make, you know, make you guys a bunch of clowns, ruin the legacy a little bit, and shove you out. Yeah, there might, there might have been something to that. Been something to that, but... Um, I know he wanted to get a lot more out of it than he got. Okay, anybody can sit down in their fucking chair with a piece of paper and a pen and fucking play Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy book their fucking WrestleMania or their invasion angle or this or that. Now fucking let's see you take all the players involved or like have to deal with all the things like 
okay, we bought this company, but we really just bought the tape library and all the, the intellectual property stuff, that, you know, trademarks and copyrights and all that. Because without it, I think they got the, ring, the rings and all that shit too, but basically, you know, the main thing was the tape library. And they acquired contracts that were um, under the WC, WCW umbrella or, or under WCW, signed with WCW. But the smart guys realized that if WCW went out of business, they were fucked. So they uh, had their contracts signed uh, Time Warner AOL. I don't think he's going out of business anytime soon. So their contracts weren't transferable. So that's why you didn't get the guys that really needed to be, be there for that invasion thing to work. Once you really like learn about it and then you learn what a concussion is and how like you start going, oh fuck, I didn't even realize I had a concussion, you know? So, I mean, who knows? But uh, the, this, isn't, this isn't like, you know, there might be some people that are like, kind of like the climate change deniers. I think there might be a little bit of C, like con CTE, concussion, you know, uh, whatever denier denial going on out there it's just a part of it's just it's it's always been there it's not a new thing it's just we're just learning of it you know I mean I met Leon Spinks in Japan in 91 and he couldn't even put a fucking sentence together when you sign up for this job when you decide that this is what you want to do you need to understand that these are the risks I didn't, we didn't know about CT, um, shit like that back when I signed up. But I'm pretty sure I was still well aware of the fact that if you hit me in the fucking head with a steel chair and I don't put my hands up, it's gonna do something, you know, it's gonna cause negative, you know, damage, it's, it's, there's gonna be damage. We just have to be mindful from now into the future. And they're doing that, guys. It's a performance center. Uh, when you're in the ring and you're not, you know, guys are wearing headgear now when they're taking bumps and shit like that. Should have been doing it for years. And any, uh, any like, buddy that said they're a pro wrestling school, like, that's a legitimate wrestling school, should have their their trainees wearing headgear when they're when they're learning the, this craft. Everybody should invest in it. It's not being a fucking pussy. There's no fucking badge of valor because uh, you went through training without wearing fucking headgear. And nobody does that right now, except for WWE. And you all need to. Not just should, you fucking need to. Yeah, for, I can't, you can't remember things that happened five, you know, five minutes ago. Always looking, you spend half the day looking for shit, like where did I, where did I put this, where did I put my keys, where's my fucking phone. Um, getting lost halfway through, uh, giving an answer to somebody in an interview and having to be in the right direction. Just little things. Just from what I saw, I thought the people were buying what they were selling. They came to have a good time. You know, I mean, obviously there were some unpopular um, decisions booking-wise. I don't, I don't think that's a big secret or anything, but uh, you know, other than, than those things, 
I think they delivered. I mean, because I don't think people had, a, you know, with all the injuries and everything, I think people had about as much expectation or high expectation um, or maybe even less with this WrestleMania as they did with last year's. And last year's, like, just blew expectations out of the water as far as I was concerned. I don't know what, I don't know if you can say that about this this year's, but I thought it was a, I thought it was a, very good WrestleMania from, you know, I could be coming from, well, I am coming from a little bit of a biased perspective, but I try to keep it real. When you get, was it eight guys out there? Seven or eight. Yeah. That's a recipe for a clusterfuck, like, all day long. I don't care, like, how great the talent is out there but if everybody's not on the same page and not all working for the match you're fucked i thought i thought all of the guys did very well i thought they all they all knew their place and, and you know i mean but everybody used their you know what they had to what their part of the uh the match everybody got the most out of it i thought i thought it's really hard for me to criticize anybody's performance in that match. And Sami Zayn was, a, I mean, he, to me, he didn't he didn't win the mat the match, but like he was to me he won uh, the award in that match for the guy that went in there and got over the best and like uh, took the energy of the people who were giving him and got the most out of it. If you go back and watch, maybe right up there with the best moments of the night when Zack Ryder won, won the icy belt. He earned that motherfucker like the hard way. It was like didn't get, you know, I mean, no, it didn't get any consideration really to speak of, and never just got over on his own with his YouTube videos and he wasn't just gonna just sit back and you know like there's a lot of guys that are doing that they just sit back and you know they they're getting paid to learn how to wrestle which is absurd to guys like me I'm not one of those guys that resent that type of thing because like God bless him for it I would have loved to have gotten paid to learn how to wrestle too I was I was expecting AJ to win. I think everybody was. I had actually I did Jer uh, talk as Jericho like a couple weeks ago uh, t to be played at a later date, but uh, we were we were discussing that I think before we started recording, and I just think that they there's a reason why that that happened. And I think that, you know, it'll be obvious probably coming up. I would, I still would have tried to do it, do it a different way, but that's just me. If it was up to you, you would have had AJ Styles. Would this be like the blow off match and then AJ Styles would win? How would you book it exactly if it was up to you? Well, the, the old, the old conventional way of doing that would be the guy does the job on the pay-per-view. And then he has a rematch on Raw the next night and gets his heat back somehow with the, with the win or with some kind of, you know, some kind of shit. But, you know, I hate that. That's so, I mean, it, yeah, it worked at one time, but it's that's one of those things where you go, let's do the old, uh, him get his heat back. And anything where it's, you got to say, let's do the old so-and-so. No, fuck that. It's called the old for a reason. It's because everybody's seen it a million fucking times. Yeah, man. It's like this distraction roll-up for the one, two, three. Pfft. I don't even want to get going on that. Where do you see AJ Styles in this company? Have you been impressed with his yes. so far? Yes. And you've had a history with AJ Styles as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know what he can do in there. Yeah, I, I, I expected those guys to have a great match. Um, it worked with both of them. And I can tell by just the way you feel somebody. It's like a dancing partner. 
I could tell that uh, they would be able to dance well together. Because both of them know how to lead and both know how to follow. Do you think going to Japan like actually helped him? Yes. Craft? Uh, absolutely. He did a, he did the, he made the, mostly all the right decisions. There was no big demand for TNA talent. Uh, the word was, was put out that there wasn't. You know, when they started, when things started getting even shakier there and guys were, you know, leaving. But I, that was, to me, more just a strategic move to, you know, let, to get word out. Yeah, we're not really interested in TNA guys. So it takes all the leverage away from them, you know, when it comes time to negotiate. But in the end, what really had to happen was like they had to take the guys that were worth taking regardless of what tainted fucking brand they came from. I really enjoyed it, it was great. And I think it had, I don't think, I know, had to do with those two guys just being over as fuck with that crowd base, with that, with that fan base. They're, those two guys are really over, like in NXT, Gable. And, and the other guys are really good mechanics, but I, I thought they did kind of way too much. <laughs> Honestly, like I saw a lot of movement, a lot of movement out there that that I would have cut down a little bit. And I don't think it would have affected the pops and that. I saw the, I, I saw what they were trying to do a few times. To, I mean, and this is just a nitpicking part of me because it was a hell of a fucking match. It was great. Like they, the whole show was great. I mean, pretty soon, who's to say that NXT is not going to be like up there with the main roster? I don't know. I wouldn't be in any hurry to. It's it's all it's always different though. I mean, I've seen, seen guys. I've seen guys. Um, you know, like Neville was the champion in NXT. And, you know, he gets he gets. Uh, the main roster and they want him to wear a fucking cape and Mighty Mouse mask. Well, not they, not they, but it was definitely thrown out. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know if there's a bias, even like an un, they don't even realize there's a bias and maybe they, some people might want to not, not see the NXT guys when they get called up, maybe they, Maybe there's some guys that won't be broken hearted if they don't get over. There's nothing big going on for me right now that I, uh, as far as like, you know, causes. Like my man, my man, uh, Amir Hekmati, he was a, one of our Marines and he was, he's a United States citizen. He was in jail. He was one of the, one of the uh, people freed in, the, in Iran. I don't know if you're aware of the four that were freed, he was one of them, but I was really like pushing, like, you know, really behind like them getting free, you know, getting let out of that fucking prison, that Iman prison over there. Yeah, um, Montel Williams was real big into, into getting the word spread on that. Like, gotta throw props to him. So, I mean, things like that. Uh, People that fuck with dogs, fuck, fucking hurt animals. I'd like to break their necks. <laughs> I'll take, uh, um, you know, I don't know, I could go on and on, but I, I just, people know, I already know, I love the people. People that come out and see me, they already know that. Uh, I encourage, the ones that don't know that <laughs> and might have a negative opinion of me to like at least come find out for yourself. So I mean if you wanna not if you wanna dislike me for shit that's true, I'm just fine with that. <laughs> but at least come find out if it's true or not.